All right. Um, so I'm not going to sit up here and talk too much because you all know if you come here, I'm good at that. Um, uh, we're not going to be here till 10 o'clock. So uh, anyways, I gave a talk at, I believe it was the last meetup that was at LinkedIn about Ember 2.0. And so some things have changed since then as time's gone on. Um, so I wanted to give a quick update and also have a little bit of like QA, not too much, but a little bit, just in case anybody had any questions about where we're going with 2.0, since Steph is gonna focus, it sounds like, not on anything 2.0 related too much. So, um, so if you don't know me, my name's Eric Wren. You should follow me on Twitter if you don't already. Um, <clears throat> so Ember 2.0. Who here has never heard of Ember 2.0? Raise your hand. All right, good. <laughs> um, so Ember 2.0, it turns out, is uh, many years in the making. Um, I actually just had my four-year commit anniversary on Ember, which was back in June, 2000, June 2nd, 2011. And uh, we released Ember 1.0 on August 31st, 2013. So. We took two years to 1.0 almost, and then that was August 31st, 2013, and so here we are today, getting very close to our first beta of Ember 2.0, and it is, what, June 10th, 2015? So it's been quite a while since our 1.0. We've had a lot of releases since, and so we've learned a lot along the way, and you, know, you might think that 2.0, if you haven't you know, been paying attention, you might think, oh, well, 2.0, that's going to be the thing that breaks all our apps, and, you know, but the, you know, it'll be better than 1.0, right? Um, but turns out, actually, that's not our strategy for 2.0. 2.0 is actually just Ember 1.13, uh, but you might be wondering, like, why? What, you know, what the heck's up with that? Basically, we've deprecated a lot of things along 1x, and since we're good citizens, uh, semver citizens, semantic versioning, Right? We try to not break your apps throughout the upgrade cycle. And so um, we've kept public APIs that we've had since August 31st, 2013. And it's time for that stuff to go finally. And that's what 2.0 is, right? 2.0 is just us removing the deprecated code and then having a lighter weight, more modern Ember. And that means removing our IE6 and seven and eight support, which we've pretty much kept and has held us back a bit. And now with 2.0, the time is right to drop those. We support IE9 still, interestingly, um, and you know we will for until Ember 3.0, basically, which will hopefully be sooner than Ember 1.0 and 2.0 have taken. So um, the important message about Ember 2.0 is it's basically there's no new features. It's basically just like let's shed the weight of the past, and we've got a new system now. Um, so what that means is a lot of the features we've had for 2.0 have already landed in 1x. So we've done a lot of stuff. Glimmer is 1.13. There's a lot of stuff in 1.13 that you know kind of gives us the, the puts us in the world that we want to be in for 2.0. Although there are some um, a couple things. Um, oh, I should mention uh, before I talk about 2.1. Um, Ah, wait, no, I did skip, okay. Um, so Ember 2.1 is going to be the release. We tried to get these features in to 2.0, or to 1.13, I should say, but we just ran out of time, and it was too much, too much to bite off. So basically, if you didn't hear, controllers are still a thing in Ember 2.0. We are not getting rid of them. The, the thing that we're not getting rid of, though, to be clear, is Ember.controller. So if you've migrated away from object controller, which has been deprecated, I think, since what went 10 or something, you can now you know, rest assured that like Ember controller is going to work throughout Ember 2x. Array controller is on its way out in 113, I believe. And so um, you know, the other thing to point out here is while these things are getting removed from the framework itself, they're going to be pluginified. So if you're using those things, if you haven't removed those deprecations yet, because some of them don't exist, you can just install a plugin, and then that functionality will still be there in 2.0. So I know there's people out there that are like, oh my god, you're saying we don't have to rewrite our apps, but man, all these deprecation warnings, it sure feels like you're making us rewrite our apps. That's not the case. There's going to be plugins at the same time, basically, that number 2.0 is released. So rest assured, we care about your upgrade path, right? So 2.1 has got really kind of some of the exciting new features, angle bracket components. That's 
uh, just plain old HTML syntax, right, for your components. So you won't have to use curlies everywhere. You'll still be able to, but um, you know, all your old your stuff will work. But angle bracket components are also kind of moving us towards a new, uh, a newer world, a little more um, you know, uh, React esque world of one way data binding by default. And so this is going to unlock a lot of additional performance gains that we've. Uh, we've basically freed up a lot of room for performance gains with Glimmer, but because we had to support the existing older style components and not the new angle bracket components, which really take advantage of uh, some of the architectural improvements, um, you're not seeing those yet until Ember 2.1 when you can start opting in to using <coughs> this new stuff. Um, and then routable components are basically the, the, the big thing that's going to uh, unlock our ability to get rid of uh, controllers Really, the last valid use case for a controller now, um, you know, in Ember 2.0 is basically at the route level. So when you generate a route in an Ember application, you have a template and you have a controller, and those things are basically, you know, the thing that those are responsible for rendering the top level uh, UI for your route. And so controllers have nice things like query parameters in them, and so we couldn't get rid of that. API until we had a replacement, and we weren't able to get our replacement API, which our routable components done yet, um, for 2.0 and for 1.13, I should say. So um, that's coming in 2.1. The interesting thing to note here is that these versions are every six weeks, so you just have to wait a little longer. A lot of this stuff is going to land in master sooner, so if you're really chomping at the bit to use it, you can start playing with Canary or beta builds, uh, you know, in a matter of weeks. So um, it's coming down the pipe. Um, another cool thing that I just wanted to briefly mention, I'm almost done, is um, we have this new concept that we're kicking around, the idea of Svelte builds. And so the idea is one of the things that has kind of been frustrating about you know, having a 1x that has lasted for uh, almost two years is that when we deprecate things and we know people aren't using them anymore, we still have to keep them in the framework. Well, what if we can give you the ability to opt out of that code being included in your builds? That's the concept behind Svelte builds. So in Ember 2.0, our plan is that if there's code that we want to deprecate, perhaps like ember.controller, once the routable components land, you'll be able to actually, if you actually make the, make the move to that, uh, to that new world, and you remove all those deprecation warnings, you can actually now remove that feature from the framework very easily just via a configuration in your Ember CLI application. Right? Now, this is kind of a bit of an intermediate step because where we really want to go is to have a build system that knows based on the fact that all our dependencies are ES6 modules and you're importing things and you know Ember uh, knows the kinds of files that it is expecting to see in your application, we can just actually analyze the full module graph and only actually bundle in the things that you're using as a default behavior. Right? So the, you don't have to worry about the cost of the framework size. You only have to worry about the cost of the things that you're using inside of the framework. Right? And so that's kind of unlocking, that would unlock a new potential you know, um, way of thinking about you know, these kind of you know, full featured uh, frameworks like Ember. The file size is less of a concern up front. You only pay for the features that you use. And so that's what we're working towards uh, with you know, uh, folks on the Babel team, um, you know, our JavaScript transpiler, and uh, you know, the Ember CLI team, and people that are working on a lot of the build infrastructure behind the scenes of Ember CLI. So we would love to see a world where that's the case. And we think that it's not far off. It's really just a matter of like prioritizing that work, you know, and having the support from the community and or sponsors to like see that work through because it's, you know, it's quite a nut to crack. But it's within sight. So that's all pretty much that I'm going to say. I want to just ask, see if anybody has any questions, if there's anything about 2.9 I haven't covered. Yes? So for the, the uh, kind of the ad hoc module bundling, has there been any discussion for trying to get ready for HTTP2 and downloading the individual model, module files that way? Yeah, so actually, Steph, um, we've been, somebody was talking about HTTP2 Basically, we were thinking about hot module reloading, and one of the thoughts was like, oh, we could deliver, it would maybe be conceptually simpler if things were delivered as HTTP2 modules 
we could just like be reloading individual files. There was another case that HTTP2 came in. Do you remember what that was? Were you paying attention to Slack when that conversation was happening? Um, I remember this conversation. Yeah. I can't remember what exactly. There's been, there's always. It, we have a, we have a, um, a branch that supports the HTTP2 stuff. Hopefully we'll get that as an option. A branch of Ember CLI. I'm sure it was related to packaging, maybe. It's a branch of the packager. So basically, you have Ember app inside Ember CLI, so we're replacing that. So we're bringing up something else to be feature compatible with that. And it, it defers the concatenation phase so much later in the process. So adding something like HTTP2 or not becomes uh, just like. It's another strategy, just basically. Because it was obvious that he actually did that first because it was easier than doing the concat step. Um, it has definite benefits and it has a little bit of downsides. For example, when you deploy to production, you still want all your source graph stored. So it turns out it doesn't actually simplify our work, which will have to make everything work, but we can, in fact, allow people to experiment with using HTTP2 uh, for stuff. Is there a particular thing about HTTP that you were interested well, I'm, in? I'm just or? generally curious because yeah. there's. You know, everybody is busy trying to bundle everything right now, but you know the future is necessarily going to be bundling. Yeah. Well, I mean, we need obviously browser support to get there, um, and uh, I think there's interest in in, in having HTTP two for development mode primarily, and it's less of a concern for you know today's production story, um, but. I mean, you can rest assured there's a lot of smart people always thinking about these kinds of things, and you know we want to do it when it makes sense. And so without people, so I, 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 I suspect actually that even right now in development, it'll be faster to concat than to use HTTP2. Uh, but that's only because I don't think enough people are using it, right? So I think as people use it, more performance, gets, there's more motivation to actually flesh out the performance story there. It just turns out that concatting files is obscenely fast. <laughs> It's hard to compete with concat and just send the compressed byte stream forward. Yeah. Uh, I hope that eventually becomes entirely uh, trivial because when you think about the production implications, it becomes super appealing where people get the slice of the picture that they care about, but nothing else without be having to produce like a billion different builds. Right, and you can yeah. multiplex your JavaScript is coming down. Yeah, and assets together on the same connection, which is right. the super cool part. Yeah. Anyway, so the plan is uh, when the packager stuff lands, it'll just be an option to, to use the HTTP thing. I doubt it will be enabled by default, but it will be an easy option. Right. Well, this has been more information than I expected to get. I was just curious, like, if it had been discussed or considered, because yeah, it seemed like all in for bundling. And yeah. Heard anything about HTTP. It's usually the case. The problem. We usually think about all these great new ideas. The problem is actually executing on them within the constraints of the community. Basically, we don't have all the time in the world, and but it's amazing that we get done of everything we do. <laughs> so, any other questions? Really, nothing else. All right. So everybody's ex if, yeah, who's not excited about Ember 2.0? I know Ben Lesh is not. All right, you're not. <laughs> Steph's not. Okay. Who else isn't excited? All right. All right, well, that's all then for me. Um, thanks for coming out, and we'll get Steph up here shortly. Uh, Steph's going to be talking about what is, do you have a title yet? Have you come up with a title? He's actually, I th are you practicing your talk for next week? Is that the? Yeah, I was going to do two different talks, but I didn't have enough time. So I stuck <laughs> <in LA. laughs>